Ooh, this is good. Now, some of us were here, uh, I think, almost a year ago. And it was around Christmas time here with Jeff and Julie. And so you guys, uh, who does not know Jeff and Julie Earl? Uh, okay. okay. One. Okay, right there. Okay. <laughs> this is Jeff and Julie Welcome. is somewhere. Julie's in the kitchen. But to know them is to love them. Amen. And we have been good friends for since 83. 83. Yeah. Back to wedding times. Woo! <laughs> Good time, so it's just an honor to be at their house. Did anybody, did anybody notice the scenery? Man. So, hey, uh, everybody keep an eye open for an eagle. Yeah. yeah. So the Lord just does that when we have gatherings. And uh, we, get, we see an eagle about maybe three or four times a year. And so, this Keep your eyes peeled. The last time Thank we got you, together, we saw the eagle. Yeah, we did? Okay. We had a pastor and his wife from Hawaii staying with us a couple of weeks ago, and there was one that showed up. Yeah, so uh, where the body is, the eagles gather. I think that's songs, isn't it? Depends on what version you read. So some versions are a little less wonderful. Not vultures. <laughs> exactly. Don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> so we're going to have a good time today. I had several uh, early warning systems go off this morning. Early warning systems. <laughs> Have you guys just established your ways that God speaks to you and he puts money in your faith tank about something? Do you know what I'm talking about? Is that using too many idioms? Money in your faith tank. So yeah, you have ways figured out, you know, how God speaks to you and say, Oh, I noticed that God, I know what you're saying to me. This is going to be good. I had a couple of those this morning that were uh, very touching. Actually, tears came to my eyes. It's just like, woohoo, money in the bank. And I'm not talking dollars. Yeah. It's better than dollars. Way better. Way, way, way better. Yeah. Uh, which would you rather have? Uh, the anointing and favor of God or a million dollars? No, you're not sure, are you? You're not sure. I know. I know. Why not both? <laughs> That's right. Why not both? Right? <laughs> that was a trick question or a bonus question or something. So uh, let's see. I'd like to introduce a few people. And so first you met Jeff, but we, Julie, would you mind stepping into this doorway? Let's see. Uh, Gay, can you see Julie's gaze behind Steve there, Julie? Look at there. I think there, she's the only one I have not met you guys. And then uh, some longtime friends. This is Greg and Mary Kay Clinton. Yeah. Mary yeah. Kay and I were on the same staff with Mike Pickle back in the 80s, believe it or not. Yeah. Another life, a lot of water under the bridge, and then she met her handsome prince. <laughs> and he took her away. Not. Took her away. And John says, turn this up a little bit so we'll see what that does. Is that better? Yeah. And uh, let me see. We have, um, let's see. Uh, I forgot. Marvin? I messed that up, probably Royal. Help me with your name. Murphy and first name? Buzz. Les? Buzz. Buzz, Buzz, Buzz Murphy. Buzz. Yes. He's, he says, we've met. Again, in another life. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to do something here just to turn this down a little bit. Okay, so good to have you here, Buzz. Gay, you're back here. I think this is your maybe second time. Good deal. Good to have you. Oh, and then we have a very distinguished guest, a very, may I say, very distinguished guest. Steve Bartlett. You guys all know him, right? To know Steve is to wonder about. I mean, to love him. <laughs> <laughs> but next to him, yeah. next to him is Beverly. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's my turn. So uh, they're just long time veterans at this fun stuff. So good to have them along. And who else? We got Jan John and uh, Nancy. Uh, John and Joyce. So sorry. John and Joyce Klaus from down uh, next I Springfield. Okay. Yeah, this is maybe your first time to this meeting. Yeah, good deal. And you were around with us at the conference, so that was awesome. And by the way, we did call that a conference. I think if we do it again, which we will, I think we're going to call it a gathering. Just so it's just a little less formal, you know, a little more kind of homey or something like that. And, uh, and then we got uh, Tyler and Crystal. They've been here. This is their second time, so it's good to have you guys here. And help me get where you're from, Clinton yeah. area. Good deal. Tyler's got something fun he's going to share a little bit later on. So we can have you along. And we got a uh, cool story we're going to tell about John here. John's going to help tell the story. Some of you know the story. That's why you're chuckling. <laughs> That's why you're chuckling. So anyway, it was fun. He normally plays keys, but uh, today we're giving him a break. It's <laughs> It's So good deal. Still got one good hand. I know. What's wrong with that, John? You can play with one hand with Leo. <laughs> you know, when we're creating atmosphere, it doesn't take a lot anyway. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, there's a keyboard right there. Oh, see? Okay, what do you say? Uh, we engage. Engage. Now, some of us, you know, you've already been there. We had a, a Zoom meeting this morning with the ALC school that uh, I was kind of rendered uh, fairly speechless a few times, just really, really tender, really just presence of God. And, and uh, so, you know, some of us got our, our tanks full and our motors revving, you know, it's just like let out the clutch and let's go. <laughs> and then others, it's like, uh, I might need a little, uh, 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 you know, something like that. So uh, whatever it takes for you, try to engage, all right? Uh, you guys, you're in touch with your spirit man? Do you know what your spirit man is? Mm -hmm. Yeah? So, you know, most of us, sadly, uh, that's actually, uh, uh, sadly, kind of a uh, telling telling question to answer. Because the answer probably is such that most of us don't know, most Christians don't know what their spirit man is. But what we want to do today is engage our spirit as much as possible as much as possible, engaging with our Father, His Spirit, Jesus, in the heavenly realm. You're blessed with all spiritual blessings in the earthly places, right? No. Listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> You're blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. And so we want to find ourselves in those heavenly places. And so that's going to take us to engage our spirit and then bring our soul along with it. All right. So let's just pray along that line just a little bit. Thank you, Father, for just being so wonderful to us. Your arms are wide open. Wide. I mean, like wide open. And you're just here to embrace us wherever we might be on our journey. No hoops to jump through. No requirements. Just me just here, just now. And so with the best of my capacity, I lean in. I lean in. Now, get out of your brain now. Get out of your brain. Go down to your spirit. Man. I lean in. Can you feel the difference between your brain and your spirit? As soon as I did that, just tingles, went clear down to my feet. I'm not kidding you one bit. Just, there's this, ooh, you feel the witness of the Spirit and the oneness of the Spirit. It's what Scripture calls deep calm to deep, or our Spirit bearing witness with His Spirit. So we lean in, lean in. 
This is more and more and more going to become our norm. This is going to be our default. This is becoming our address. This is going to become more of our address than the temporal, temporal street that we live on. Thank you, Father, for being so, well, not just entreating now with open arms, but helpful as a father who brings us into fresh new places. You're good. So today, it's uh, with a lot of joy and expectations. We just say, wow, where are you going to take us, Jesus? Holy Spirit, what you got in mind for us? Father, what did you dream up today? Angels, what are you going to do as we romp and play? Yep, just romp and play. Well, okay, let's use biblical language. Skip and leap upon the mountains. Okay, now you're not so offended, are you? Okay, we're going to romp and play and skip and leap on the mountains today and have some doggone fun. Thank you. And then, Father, we just want to say that uh, if there are other territories of heavenly places that you want to open up to us, then... Uh, we say yes, right, everybody? And everybody said yes. One more time, and everybody said yes. yes. Good job. All right. Good job. Romp and play. Everybody say romp and play. Romp and play. <laughs> I know it's a little different language than the Bible uses, it, but it's the same thing. It sounds like romper room. We're supposed to become childlike. Are we childlike? We need that little, that little thing that she used to look through oh, and see that's everybody's right. That's right. I see. <laughs> so we asked Jeff to just leave us in a couple songs, just kind of engage our hearts, and then uh, we'll do some testimonies and see where we go from there. So Lord, we lift your name on high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Oh, I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came to heaven to earth to show.
and creatures and live and uh, 24 elders and uh, living creatures they're falling down to worship this amazing lamb can you hear in your mind's ear can you hear the chorus of love song going up to the lamb the ladies are singing I love you I love you I love you the guys are joining in and I I love you all around the throne we're singing I love you joining with every I love you and all the elders singing too or 40 years, David and his crew worship before the Lord without stop. Tabernacle of David, 4,000 musicians doing this, 288 singers. They're singing along, singing along. And, well, I don't know what to sing right now. Let's just sing a chorus and let's just kind of all join in together. And, oh, the chorus. 288 singers, 4,000 musicians in there before the Lord and then somebody steps up and begins singing a verse and I don't know what I'm going to sing but I'm going to sing something and then some of you are going to sing verse 2 okay yeah let's let's do it one more time we're just going to step into it ladies it goes like this I love you I love you I love you and all the guys join in now and I Lord, 
for what you've done. And ladies and choruses, quiet down just a little bit. Give space for a verse and we'll come back to the chorus. All right. Lord, I thank you for every day of my life. How you spared my life on very specific occasions. You dispatched angels. They came and carried out your wonderful plan. Brought me now before your throne so I could worship you again. I love you. And I love you. I love you. All together. And I cooking back here. Somebody's up next. I love you. I see that hand. <laughs> you blew my mind in the middle of the night. When you took me up and flew me around. You blew my mind in the middle of the night I will never be the same Cause I saw with my own eyes What is real You blew my mind in the middle of the night And I'm so grateful God I'll never be the same And I sing I love you, I love you, I love you. Guys, join. I Just wait into the light of your love yeah, And my heart comes alive And my mind expands yeah. As I see your great love The immenseness of your plans <laughs> Oh Lord, yeah. who is like the Lord? Who is like my father? Who is like my father? Who is like the Lord? Who is like the Lord? Who is like my father? Who is like my father? I
more time and we'll see if somebody else will come. Something like David's telling Who are some of the singers? Jedithan and Chenaniah and uh, I forget their names now. Mark and Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> and Angela <laughs> and Craig. We're all there. We're all there. I didn't know you were that old. <laughs> Oh, there you go, outside of that. We were there. Oh, isn't that fun? We are there. Yeah, are that's there. true. Yeah. 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 Isn't that fun? Isn't that fun? You know, what could we do if we just all got freed up? What would that be like? What would that look like? Gosh, you know, we might start having fun. <laughs> Uh, I'll follow you, my friend. <laughs> okay, great, Josh. Thanks so much. That's awesome. Yeah, just a little bit of somebody just opens the door and then doggone it, the rabbits got out of the cage. <laughs> well, what's going to happen then? You know, <laughs> you just can't get them back in. They get all happy like Linda, you know, and then they're all, okay. No, all right. This it's a <laughs> 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 oh, oh. <laughs> It's a goner now, we're gone. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> you know, speaking of being uh back in David's Tabernacle, Jim uh John Paul Jackson tells a story, and probably some of you have heard this story. And he tells it. It's on uh, YouTube. If you want to look it up. He was taken back to uh, a time in Old Testament, and come to find out, he met King David. Oh, wow. He had all the sights and sounds and smells <laughs> of the day, vivid color, and everything. And he came back, and it's been a while since I heard this story, so I may not have it all completely accurate and all the details. But he came back from that experience in the room where his friends were and he told them the experience and they're like okay cool you know i guess anybody can have an experience like that it's pretty cool except they were actually in jerusalem physically speaking and they said well why don't you come with us shortly thereafter they said why don't you come with us and they went down to a place <laughs> i think it, they call it the cardo it's a place that's really it's been excavated back to the original stones <laughs> where jesus would have walked or thereabouts that time period. And then it's not been recreated. It's just been taken all the rubble and debris back to the the stones of the walls and the stones of the floor. And the, the floor is, you know, all the stones are rounded and everything. So it's, it's the real deal. And anyway, uh, when he walked in, and by the way, they had just opened that up. Nobody had ever seen it. It, had, it wasn't open to the public yet until just recently so nobody had ever seen that and he definitely hadn't seen it when he walked he says this is it this is where i was wow. <laughs> and so uh, there's more to it that gives more kind of uh solidity or authenticity to the experience but when we're speaking about we were there or we are there or we will be there <laughs> yes 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 it's getting all messed up these days you know <laughs> it's just getting all messed up you know, what tents are we going to talk in? Yeah. <laughs> if in the spirit realm there's no time or distance, yeah. what do you say then? Yeah. Well, I was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I don't know what you said, Linda, but this maybe is what you said. God actually named himself, I am that I am. Is that what you said? And we what? We're in him and we am. <laughs> oh, I actually have a, I actually have had an encounter with King David. Well, come on. Come on. Don't hold back. Well, 
well, you know, it's like I haven't had anything in a few years, so they're all, you know, a little bit dated. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Wait, try in the past? Oh, no, that's true. <laughs> this morning. <laughs> Um, singing in the in the prayer house in Austin, Texas, um, singing in the spirit, getting ready to go into a Song of Solomon, you know, like a apple tree in the trees of the forest, you know, so is my beloved. Yeah. That was the passage, but we're singing in the spirit and the presence of the Lord is just getting thicker and thicker and thicker. I'm just going in and in. I was the prayer leader and I became aware that there was a procession happening it was in i was seeing it of course my eyes were closed but it, there was a convergence happening this very profound procession and of course my mind went straight to um psalm 45 and i thought oh maybe i need to call an audible and we need to shift verses but then jonathan began singing the cycle and i thought oh okay you know we, we went into it but it was so profound we landed on this chorus there's a feather just kind of wafting up amen the oh, yes so Yes, Lord, Come on we up. received the manifestation of, oh, woo. Um, so we land on a chorus, and that procession comes in again, but I see it more clearly. And it is when King David is bringing the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem, and he is dancing a wild dance, and he's dancing to the music we're playing. Ooh. David. When he was in his trance, he yeah. went through the ages, oh, okay. and he got the music. That's why Michael was saying, "Boy, you," because he wasn't going. Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> <laughs> he was going. Whoa, whoa. I mean, it was crazy. He was Head spinning around. Stuff. It was so, it, and I just—it was like this. It was so profound that I had to put down the microphone and I had to dance in the in the room and twirl around like I could see him in it. It was just the most craziest time. I've never experienced anything like that. And when that cycle was over, at the exact same time, the wire to the keyboard and the wire to the guitar shorted out because the it was so electric <laughs> in the room. Okay. And when we were done, they came back in going, wow, that was, and, and I said, I mean, this literally came out of my mouth. I said, I'm so sorry that I danced so undignified. <laughs> I <literally laughs> said that. I've heard that before. That's what, the, that's what it said about that. You know, anyway. But it, but it made me understand that when David was in his dance trance, he was transcending yeah. the ages. Wow. And we Super. were converging, and it was a real thing. So he went all over. He went through the whole, he saw so much music, and that's how... He established the tabernacle yes. because of yes. what he experienced. That's right, in the new covenant. Yes, yeah. he saw us yeah. and we saw him. It's yeah. just, you can't even figure, you can't get your head around that. But, <laughs> but I never forgot it because yeah. it was so profound. Like I said, the, all of a sudden the instruments shorted out because wow. Super. it was, yeah, very profound. Wow. So I got a thought about that. David's tabernacle. Most people believe that there was no veil around the tab uh, the ark during David's tabernacle, and that the people became the living veil. And of course, that was not kosher with Moses's law and the law that God gave Moses. How is it possible that you could have an ark without a veil? People could worship around it. And so, Angela, it makes a lot of sense when if David was dancing in time outside of time maybe that's a better word outside of time and ahead in time and he saw new covenant and he says whoa this is amazing there's not going to be a veil in the new covenant this is awesome <laughs> and then listen to this colossians 3 verse 4 as often as christ who is our life appears we get to appear with him in that same glory. So when David beheld the new covenant grace, the new covenant without veil, he got to partake of it. He got to uh, embrace it and got to live it. Mm -hmm. As often as Jesus appears, you get to appear in the same glory, whatever he appears to you in. That's what the verse says. Colossians 3 verse 4. Wow. As often as Christ, who is our life, appears, we shall appear with him in glory. In that same glory.
So a couple words, a little elaborated so we can have some understanding. But the point is, I love seeing Jesus because every time we get to see him, he says, okay, now you own that. That's right. Mm, that's right. 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 You know, it makes sense that Moses had to go up onto the mountain to get the pattern for the tabernacle. Yeah. And to think that David did not go into the heavenlies to get the pattern that he had, he had to go there. Wow. There was no other way to find that pattern. Uh, he had to go into the heavenlies just like Moses went into the mountain of God. Yep. And, you know, it, when you see that kind of a pattern, you can dance like any volunteers to kind of display that? Yeah. Give us an example. She has some experience. Well, yes. I, I, I already did, no. <laughs> <laughs> but you did say we were going to be dancing and leaping on hills. That's right. Yes. Uh, what was that other I one? I did romp and play. Romp and play. Romp and play. <laughs> Good, good, good. Uh, let's see. Let's have Tyler tell the story, and then Julie is—is is there something last night you'd like to tell? Is that something that's timely? Well, I don't know. Maybe not. No. Did you see something last night? Oh, yeah. I don't know if that's timely. No pressure. Nobody knows what it is yet, so don't say it unless you want it to be said. So just. <coughs> So this is Tyler and Crystal, and they've been here one time before, and so uh, some things happened to you in that meeting last time, yeah. and some really good things since then. Yeah. I'm Tyler. Hello. 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 <laughs> 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 yeah. So I was mowing the yard when day this summer. And the Holy Spirit came upon me. And it was quite a long time, uh, probably 30, maybe 40 minutes, crying and laughing. And, you know, I'm, like, I'm, I'm sure I look crazy to the neighbors, right? And I'm sitting there on the lawnmower. It's running. Right it's it's very stopped. Very undignified. Sorry. Yeah, very undignified. <laughs> Hands in the air, eyes closed. And I don't know. I was, I was not here. Um, oh. So. <laughs> I, I assume heaven, I was not here, um, and he told me that someone will be in an accident and I will be able to provide help to, to heal them, and I needed to go to our local hospital and go pray for people. So I got off the mower and told Chris, I said, I've got to go to the hospital and pray for people, and she's like, what, what are you doing? This is, this is nuts. <laughs> So I drove to the hospital and they wouldn't let me in. <laughs> so I'm walking around outside with my hands in the air, praying out loud. And I don't know if it was a test of obedience, but um, so by the time I got home, it was it was dark. And and Crystal Betty Salon. <laughs> so my daughter and I had been gone right before that and we get home and I'm like the yard should have already been mowed I'm like what is he doing so he's like way out in the yard and I just see him sitting there and I'm like what is he doing <laughs> so I call him and he's and he's like I'm just having an encounter with the Holy Spirit and I'm like okay <laughs> so I just go inside go about my business he comes in he tells me he's going to the hospital I'm like happening so he goes and he does this thing and I'm like okay and so the next day because he didn't finish mowing I had to finish mowing the yard and so I'm mowing along and listening to my music and I felt this had this terrible feeling something was going to happen to our daughter and it was awful I'm like oh no I'm dismissing that feeling no I'm not going to have that and so I tried to stop thinking about it and it was hours and hours later and we were going to a rodeo 
that was like 25 minutes away. So I just had this terrible feeling the whole time in the car that we were going to get in an accident or something. Something bad's going to happen to her. And I didn't tell Tyler about it. And anyways, then we get there, and I'll let him finish the story. So we're at the at the rodeo. I'm at the ticket booth buying tickets, and there's beside there uh, the Clydesdale horses. We just get a treat and feed the horses. Uh, our oldest daughter, she's ten. She she got some treats and she was feeding the horses. And as she she reached up, the the horse grabbed the treat, and it also grabbed her her two fingers, and it bit onto her fingers and lift her, lifted her about three foot off the ground by her finger. So of course, lots of crying and screaming, right? And, and so we, we get her inside this building and it's, her fingers look terrible. They're, they're mangled, the, the skin is just, just shredded in blood. I mean, it's terrible. Um, two first responders come up and they, they look at it and they say, you know, fingers are broken, it looks awful. You need to get her to the hospital like, right now. Then my brother and his wife, they come up and they're both nurses and they said the same thing. They said, oh, it looks awful. We need to get her there immediately. Then uh, two paramedics from the ambulance showed up and they, they said the same thing. They said, oh, the, this is awful. So they gave her an ice pack and they, they go out to the ambulance to, uh, to get some paperwork. They're gone about 10 minutes. And, and when they walk out the door, uh, we're, we're sitting there, Crystal and I, with our daughter and you know what are we going to do i was like wait a minute the holy spirit told me this guy I, I, i've got this so i put her hand in mine and and we prayed out loud right there for for god to bring healing and when the paramedics came back in they said well wow those fingers look a lot better right they were like i I think she's going to be fine. And, and then the first responders came back in and said the same thing. And my brother and his wife came back in. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, boy, the ice pack did wonders. And I said, <laughs> I said let me tell you about my Jesus. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything else? That was it. She was like, have an angel on their lawnmower. We have you and Kelly on the mower, so I think you might be right. It seems like there's a, a, a little theme here of being undignified. Oh, <laughs>
fine-tuning my thinking about dancing and said dance said okay please. I can't remember which way it went but as speaking in tongues is to your mouth and your speech so is dance to your whole body okay as as speaking in tongues is to your mouth so is dance to your whole body I can remember you know, coming into a Pentecostal church, and I had been raised in a more uh, calm, calmer, conservative place when I was Oh, really? <laughs> really. <laughs> and I remember how stiff I was, and how when that dance and all that stuff was going, I just couldn't do it. I mean, everything in me wanted to just sit there and, but I, I was fascinated by it but it wasn't until I got really drunk in the Holy Ghost once and, and I remember I, I took this run from the back and jumped over the pews and lit at the altar just dancing wildly and I never looked back from that time all of a sudden I felt that that desire to just cut loose and just be free and and it was it was the most freeing thing I've, I've experienced yeah. because I was no longer sitting there on the sidelines watching yeah. what was happening wow. yep. I was part of the action yep. <laughs> yeah. yes. No more spectators. Yeah. Yeah. Now we got players. Everybody's a player. Everybody's a player. Time for a drink, Mark. <laughs> what was that? Time for a drink. Time for a drink. Ooh. How about how about give your neighbor a drink? How about that? You go something like this. Have a nice drink. <laughs> how about have another drink, Sylvia? Open wide your mouth and I will fill it. Watch your mouth and I will fill it. Talk about it. Those verses are in there. Open wide your mouth and I will fill it. Oh, hello. <laughs> Good. Who's got a story? Uh, 
from our last tasting, you know I had trouble seeing. And so I was doing what Karen Dugan said to listen to your ascending tape. So I was doing Bob Jones, since I did get to ascend with him one time years ago. Yeah. So I listened to his voice. And I do this for a week. Nothing happens because the minute you get up there, he says, Do you feel the wind? And I never feel the wind. Uh, and so I get so disappointed. <laughs> so last Tuesday, I was like sitting in that chair saying, Lord, I just don't know what to believe. And, and then I got an email from Bob Hartley like two hours later. He never sends me emails. He says, Dream for you, dot, 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 gave me a link. It was to Justin Paul Abraham, and the title was Enter into Heaven. Ooh, come on. <laughs> So I believe it's going to yeah. happen. Yeah. <laughs> but last night in the middle of the light, I woke up and I looked and there was a, like a soft, bright, not a bright, a soft, yellowish white light. And I stared at it and it disappeared. Oh, wow. And I thought, maybe that was just our humidifier. And I looked at the humidifier. It had no lights. Yeah. I think I've got an angel. Yeah. And Jeff. Um, you released angels in the house even for today, right? Before, yeah. Yeah. yeah yesterday he released mm -hmm. angels, and then last night she sees this angel in her room. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I had a, I had a kind of a, just a feeling. I don't know, you know how you get feelings sometimes. That um, you know how a, a crowd is kind of before a, a performance or a concert or something like that and they're just kind of all excited and they're all kind of chattery and, and uh, anticipating of what's going to be happening and I just had that sense that's the angels before our meeting and they were all yeah. just kind of excited about coming awesome. and visiting and seeing what's going oh, yeah. on and what God's going to release and, yeah. oh, that's good, Jeff. I like that. <laughs> I've had something similar like that, Jeff, where I saw them and my angels were excited and giddy to actually commune with the other angels that came with everybody else. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yeah. That's it. That was yeah. it. Yeah. 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 That, that happened at the well. We have, we have a lady that comes and she sees angels pretty often. And she was sharing with Sylvia that when Sylvia came, and her angels saw Sylvia's angels. They were high fiving. They were so excited. They were like catching up on all the stuff, you know. I'm like sitting around. Like, oh, you know, you know, yeah. We we don't think of this of, of them being personalities of real people type, you know. And they're interacting with each other and having a great time. And I think just, just thinking about that just excites me, you know, because yeah. yeah. it's part of their their uh, of the reality of them, I guess. Somebody read uh, Hebrews twelve twenty two. Somebody pull that up. I've quoted it so many times. We need somebody else to quote it. Speaking of angels, there are other things in that passage also, but we'll read that first one. Who's got it? Who's got it? Who's ready? <laughs> NIV says it. Okay, do it, Pastor. I don't know what that is. Uh, By hold contrast, on. we have already come near to God in a totally different realm, the Zion realm, for we have entered the city of the living God, which is the new Jerusalem in heaven. We have joined the festal gathering of myriads of angels in their joyous celebration. So there's other things in that passage, but that's what I wanted to feature. What are they doing? What are those angels doing? Festival. Festal gathering of myriads in their joyous celebration. Wow. So what's festal? Somebody tell me what Woo! festal is. Celebratory. Yeah. Celebratory. Yeah. Uh, dancing undignified? <laughs> so we have come to them. So what it says. You have now come to the Mount Zion. Wow, here we are. Angels all around. I like the idea several times in my life. And key moments, several key moments, I should say, a lot of other lesson moments, but I've engaged my angels with other people's angels or other group's angels. Angels, I want to bless you to fraternize. I like that word, yeah. fraternize. Yeah. Just go get buddy buddy <laughs> with those people, the angels. And we were in Jerusalem one time, somebody heard this story. We were in the ultra-Orthodox 
uh, holiest night of the year, Yom Kippur. And so, you know, you, you don't mess around in a situation like that. And there was some apprehension in our hearts for sure. Until I realized, wait a minute, this is not just a flesh and blood thing. I'm going to move over into the spirit realm. I'm going to activate my angels to fraternize with their angels and just let them know, hey, 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 we're here on a friendly basis. Yeah. We're here to join in. We're here to support. And so anyway, the point is I had several uh, key things happen in that meeting that indicated that the tensions had subsided. And then in the next couple of weeks and the sub subsequent times that we went to Jerusalem, there were un unbelievably unnatural, except for heaven's doings, of course, uh, encounters with people of status that we didn't go after, that we shouldn't have happened, but they did happen and they had an amazing God purpose and design about them. And I believe for, with all my heart that those angel interactions begin to set the stage and set things in motion. So, oh, it gets better all the time. Oh, I love that. Um, I had uh, an angel come and visit me that, that was part of someone else's life, not mentioning any names, Karen no. Morgan. But anyway, <laughs> no. her, she has an angel called Sylvia. And one day I was spending time with the Lord and her angel showed up. Well, I did, I just wasn't thinking. All I could say was, does Karen know you're here? <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> I said, so, you know, I asked the angel. angel. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow. I'm, so that, that was basically it. I just had that small curiosity and conversation with it, not really asking me to do anything, just like, what are you doing here? <laughs> More stories. Karen, she's always got a story. Yeah. You need a battery, Mark? I need a battery, Mark. Well, this is a two part story, and the second part is still happening. So if I get lost, you pull me out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I shared part of this yesterday on the Zoom call, but um, so Wednesday, and thanks to someone else here who described the kind of day I had because they had one too. I hit the wall, mm. and um, I was just in a place where I couldn't seem to step into the spirit realm. I was emotional and it was a mess. And um, toward the evening, I was led to Psalm 51. Where it was talking about David and he committed some horrible things and how he went before the Lord according to the love and kindness of the Lord, not according to his sin. Yeah. And how the Lord washed him white as snow. And that really began to minister to me because through some of the emotional things that were happening, that there was a trigger uncovered that I still had some shame that like maybe what's happening in my family is my fault, which is not true. Yeah. And so the Lord, I went to bed and I just said, Lord, I'm with you. I'm struggling, but I'm with you. And all night long, I kept waking up and he, I was laying on top of a river and he was standing pouring water over me. Wow. Every time I woke up, he was pouring wow. water over me. And I woke up in the morning and he was still all through the next day, and then we went and did a Zoom call with Christopher Carter. And he introduced crazy and divine imagination things that I've never thought of, and I just entered in. And he said, you know, it's the holiday season, so I asked Jesus, you know, what do you have to do during the holiday season, something special? And he said, I'm not going to take you there, I'm going to let you go on your own journey. Okay, sorry. And um, so the next thing I know, Jesus pulls up like Father Christmas in a sleigh drawn by horses and picks me up. 
and he takes me through deep snow back into a valley and there's this beautiful Christmas chalet. Every time I tell us, I'm like, there. So no. we walk in the door and it's just beautiful. It's full of people and a big Christmas tree. And in the kitchen, there's this light radiating and it's angels. I went out there, they're cooking, they're baking, <laughs> <laughs> having the best time. And there's a lot going on, but suddenly I turned around and I see some family members that have gone on to be with the Lord, but the best part is my kids were there and my grandkids. And the backstory is part of the reason that I'm so sad is because it's been about four years. My kids refuse to get together ever again. They're saying this is not true yeah. and grandkids. And so I don't get to see my kids except one. I have five and five grandkids. And so just like Jesus, we were all together in this chalet, having the best time. And I could be who I was. And <laughs> we were all there. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and you know what? I can go there. He said, you can go there anytime you want and be with your kids. And I said, Jesus, what do you like about this? He said, I love being with you yeah. and being with your kids. And so it's just a huge, huge thing. He's a good father. Yeah. <laughs> what he wants to do for us, can't, we can't even imagine. Yeah. But yeah. in our divine imagination, look where he took me. Yeah. Yeah. I could have never figured that out if he did. So, yeah. Yeah. Mark, how about her laying on the river and on the floor of the water up? Aquarius, pouring the water, oh, yeah. season is the time, the season comes yeah. from Aquarius, the picture. Well, circus believe that we've come into a new age, literally, not astrologically or zodiac, we come in astronomically, but it also is biblically. And anyway, coming to a new age and uh, that uh, it's called Aquarius. Yeah, I understand that the other side got the name and made it popular before we did, but that doesn't mean they got the corner on it. They're just making it a, okay, you get the point. And so what's the icon? What's the image of Aquarius? A heavenly man pouring water. And so here it was pouring water. Every time she woke up. <laughs> now, uh, you know, there's just a ton of uh, bruised and broken parts and places in our lives from things and, you know, fender benders and whatever we had through life with people and circumstances and bills and failures and weather and whatever, you know, it's just a ton of that. And our soul man takes quite a hit, usually on a daily basis. I mean, honestly, there are very few things in this life that add to us. Okay, maybe the sun does, vitamin D, but you know, go to your mailbox. Is that taking from you or adding to you? <laughs> uh, how many of you love the junk mail in your, in your email box, inbox? You know, it's just, re everything's requiring something from us, whether it's our kids or other people. And so, what God, I believe, is interested in doing is healing up the whole man, healing up the whole man. Now, he could do that partially with us as earth-based, earthbound Christians. He does love to break through from the spirit realm down into the natural world and into the earthly circumstance. He loves to do that because he wants to get our attention and win our hearts, yeah. win our love. He's so good, he'll get in the sandbox with us and play with the old doggy chewed up toys and the doggy presents that got left into the sandbox. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he doesn't mind. He's a good dad. That's yeah. not beneath him. He's just like, no, no, no. I like you. I don't care about anything. I just like you. I like being where you are. So it doesn't matter where we're at, he'll get in the sandbox with us. <clears throat> in the process, 
He want, his, his attempt, his desire, his objective is to win us to leave our binky behind and our, leave, our old sun faded dump truck that the dog bit the last part of the wheel off of it, you know, <laughs> to be able to leave it. That was our favorite. But to be able to leave that behind and come into the next level with them. Scripture says uh, he's given us all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Maybe we've been trying to get the blessings in the earthly places. Or how about John 17, verse 24, where Jesus said, Father, those that you gave me, I desire, I long for them to be with me where I am. And here's the key phrase, so that I can show them my glory. Now, he can show us his glory down on earth base, not a problem. He does that all the time. But he's wanting to entreat us and win us to come up into the heavenly places so they can finish the healing processes, remember, so that I can show them my glory. That's what he said, John 17, 24. Why does he want us up there? He said it in the exact same verse, so that I can show you my glory. And that's where you get every spiritual blessings in these heavenly places. So, like, who would stay behind? You want to raise your hand real high if you just, well, no, I think I'll just stay behind, you know? <laughs> no takers. Okay. Bill Johnson, now I don't mean this to be an indictment, but I'll just quote Bill Johnson. He just says, I can't prove this. That's exactly what he said. I can't prove this, but I rather believe that the difference between earth base and heaven base is the difference between servanthood and sonship. That's pretty strong. Yeah. Pretty dog is strong, dog on strong. The difference between it is the difference between servanthood. Like I'm worthy, I'm, I'm not worthy of anything. Uh, God, you I know you're way up there, and I'll just be my little old self down here. I'm not trying to ask too much. Servanthood. Servant mentality, slave mentality. I'll try to do good best I can. Come up here and move into sonship. Now I'd like to create a little uh, diagram and just a little bit of explanation about it. And then I want to pull a story in about John. Yep, John, that's it. It's about time to be delivered up before the tribunal. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I have a little story before we get to Okay, go for it. <laughs> so, oh, here, John. When, when I was on um, the hospital bed, <laughs> sitting up and uh, waiting for my x-ray to come back, there's no doctor in the room, and uh, I realized that I wasn't in my body. I wasn't trying to go anywhere or do anything outside. I just realized that I was sitting with my spirit in my spirit. I was actually in my spirit, but I, I was with my body at the same time. And I thought that was interesting. And then having that opportunity of like, okay, well, what do you want to do, God? That that was kind of something that I just had in my heart at that moment. I was like, okay, well, what do you want to do? I'll, 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 I'll do whatever you want to do. And at that same time, a doctor walked in. So it was kind of, kind of a cool little moment of, I don't know, kingdom, <laughs> you know, just like, being okay and not even aware that you're really trying to go out, but we were, or I was out. <laughs> Where were you? I was in the room, but I was not. <laughs> okay, so that I think makes this point, helps set this point up really good. So uh, let's call this God, okay? So this is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, okay? That's where they live, right up here in this part right here. The Bible says that when you and I get saved or got saved, that we became a new creation, a new spirit was put in us. Okay. And then according to uh, Colossians 3, 1, it says, since you were raised. What's that? You got raised from being a mere earthling status to heaven based. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 2, 6 says that we're seated now with who? Right. Where? So in heavenly places. So where's Father, Son, and Ghost? Holy Ghost, they're in heaven. By the way, uh, when Jesus was raised and seated, where was he seated? At the... Right. And then another verse says, 
he was seated uh, uh, in these, I forget the, how the good verse goes exactly. It says, far above all principalities and powers. That's where Jesus is, is seated. Okay, we're good with that? Yeah. So that's a long ways up there, right? I, I don't know how far that is, but that's got to be a long ways up there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but anyway, just for our human perspective. But then the cool thing is, you and I, Ephesians 2, 6, got seated with him in the same place in our spirit man. Our spirit man got renewed, recreated. Scripture says new kinos. Actually means new species. You're not just a spiffy duck human. Didn't just put a nice flashy bow tie on. You're a new species with different DNA. What it says? Kinos. Look it up. Greek for new creation. Okay, so, but anyway, our spirit, and this is our spirit man right here. It got raised and brought into fellowship. Now, actually, it's all in oneness here, but I'm going to make a point, so I'm going to leave it partially out. This part right here is in full communion with God all the time. You mean you and I have a part of us? that is fully communing with God right now? I think that's what the scripture says. Sadly, since religion hasn't taught us how to commune with our own spirit, then we don't get to participate with the benefits of this communion our spirit man has with the spirit of God. Tracking with me? So what we want to do is get in touch with our spirit man. Now we got a problem though, because everything in our society, and sadly, most things in our church, religion, accentuates two other parts of us. So this part right here, this is our whole being, our three part, whatever. Our three part B. Okay, so we're made up of our spirit and our soul and our body. Let's just kind of do it like that, separate them a little bit just so we can distinguish them a little bit. In our culture, we make our soul to be king, we make our soul dominant. That would be our mind, will, and emotions. Does anybody ever go to college and get degrees and now there's something? So, you know, so I did this and this and this, and now I'm something because I have a pedigree or degree. <laughs> so we, we make our, our mind king. If I can cram more stuff in there, then I'm worth more. I get paid more. And then, how many of us live by our soul's emotions? It's like, uh, you know, I'm mad, so pop him in the nose. Okay, maybe not us, but you know what I'm saying. So our soul man dictates to us what to do. I'm mad, sad, glad, stressed, whatever, and so we do something about that. We listen to our soul. Soul is probably the primary voice. Now we, our body also has a voice, has certain drives, like hunger. Anybody ever followed the drive of your body, namely hunger? Has anybody ever done that? Yes, of course. If we didn't, we'd die. So that's a pretty good drive. That's a pretty good thing to follow. If we stopped having that, we'd probably die on the earth. Humanity would stop in a generation, or maybe in a week or two. But anyway, um, so our body has a voice and it has drives. And so we have pretty much made these two areas to be king. Oops. King. That's the, that's the voices that we listen to on an internal being. Now, you and I are learning more. And if we're conscientious charismatics, maybe even conscientious Pentecostals, we might have learned a little bit about our spirit man, 
But honestly, there's not a lot of teaching about how to hear the voice of your spirit, man. And where we're going, it will be absolutely vital to be able to understand your own spirit and the spirit of God. Soulish realm will not get us where we're wanting to go. And if we somehow happen to get there, we cannot have accurate um, directives or understanding right. or wisdom based on our soul. Right. Our emotions are pretty doggone fickle. And our body, of course, like yesterday, my body was screaming at me because I had an infected tooth and I couldn't eat for a day or a day and a half, you know. Fortunately, I got a root canal yesterday and I'm a okay today. <laughs> so my body was screaming at me and I, I did give in to my body, you know, okay, I'll do something about it. So some things that our body says and something our soul says are good, but they're not good enough to be the dictates of where we're going above the line. Above the line requires much a much different operating system. And so what we want to do is activate our spirit man or acknowledge our spirit man or authorize our spirit man to begin to take leadership yeah. over the other two areas of our lives. Now, this is the spirit of God. And we're not talking about our spirit taking leadership apart from God. Right. We're talking under leadership of Holy Spirit. We're giving my spirit man charge to take leadership over my soul and my body. Too long, for too long, my soul and my body have been in leadership. And how far has that gotten us? Well, we're here, so it's a mixed bag. There's some things that are good, and we've got some baggage along with us. So, But we're getting freed up from our baggage, and we're going to step into an awareness of and a practice of living from our spirit way more than living from the voices of our soul and body. Uh, early on, right at the beginning, I prayed, God, we're beginning to be aware of this spirit realm, and it's our desire to walk in that realm until it's more real than this world right here. Yeah. That our address in the spirit realm is more normal. It's default, meaning it's to go to without having to think about it. It's the first position you think about yourself rather than, well, okay, let me see if I, okay, let me grunt a little bit. I can get, okay, now I'm in heaven. Now it takes that for a while for us, and um, you know, we're still working through all of that. But there will be a time when our living in heaven will be more real than living at what's your address here? 2666. 6620. It'll be more real than living on this lane at that address. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think God begins to get happy. Mm -hmm. it's like, I'm happy for babies. He says, I love babies. I get into playpens and sandboxes with them, and it's not a problem. I love them to pieces. It's awesome. But my dream is that when we learn how to be completed or mature sons and daughters, learning how to live in the spirit realm, taking leadership from our spirit man, being in contact or in touch, uh, cognizantly aware of, and I don't. when I say cognizant, I don't just mean my mind is in control. It's, I mean my mind or my thinking process is aware of the spirit man and what's happening in my spirit man. Okay, so I want to begin to be so in touch with this that when my spirit man says something, I don't say, well, uh, wait a minute, was that the devil? And is that uh, society and the norms of keeping up with the Joneses? Uh, is that you, God? Is that an angel? Is that just me and my desires? Or is that my fears? You know, whatever. I want to be able to distinguish between those voices so that I can move with confidence and comprehensive whatever is the appropriate mode to follow up that that voice right so i want to just tell one experience that just happened two days ago so uh john 
was uh, he you guys probably have seen some of his uh, Instagram videos and <laughs> Facebook videos and uh, well he's uh, very colorful let's say he's in face, <laughs> you know, face plant videos <laughs> <laughs> he did have a face plant video and, uh, I haven't seen him without that band-aid for about five days now so but he's pretty good now. yeah you're looking good looking good so uh, he's mountain biking and he loves these jump things, you know. About five days ago, he, uh, oh, one didn't happen right. It just didn't work out real good. And somehow his face and the ground met. It's like, and it's a wow. solid meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't real good. And uh, he got home. He was able to ride home. And that was no, no big deal. Well, it was kind of a big deal. But anyway, well, then two days ago, I'll get up to one point, then you can tell the rest of it. So, uh, Friday morning, I'm taking a shower. I'm not thinking about John, not thinking about mountain bikes, I'm not thinking about anything related to what this next thought is. And out of the blue, there's this thought, you know, you could get a very serious phone call regarding John. And it had pretty dire consequences. I didn't paint the picture in my mind because this all happened in a very few seconds. But I knew just kind of in an instant, you're, you're, you're at the depth of that thought. You know what it means. You know what it is. And I know at this point now, let me just kind of open up a little bit how I've learned to prophesy. Even though I'm not a prophet, you and I can all prophesy, right? Raise your hand real high. Yeah, yeah. Yep, good deal. Okay, so the way I've learned to prophesy is that I don't follow natural thinking patterns in my mind. Thoughts that came from other thoughts are suspicious to me, meaning I don't give them much credibility. But when I'm standing in the mode where I want to prophesy, and when I've got all this, I got things and feelings and whatever is all going on like this, and then boop. There's just this thought appears out of nowhere with no thread connecting it to anything else. That's one of the ways that I've learned to step in with confidence. My spirit man has just said something, or the spirit of God just said something, and now I can speak into that. Now I can I respond to that. Okay, so that's been something I've established over 25 years, something like that. So I recognize that kind of MO. That's something on the spirit man. That's, see, that's beyond my brain. My brain did not bring that thought in, nor did my brain have a thought process or a thread to get to that thought. That thought came from another place. It didn't come from my cognitive. In my thinking, it came from my spirit man. My spirit man says, boop, think about this. Okay. That's where we're going. So anyway, when that happened the other morning, uh, I just immediately engaged. I just said, no, not on my watch. It was just fully engaged. I mean, like to the wherever my spirit man is, just went just like that. Every bit of my being was fully engaged. I said, no, not on my watch. Now, I actually didn't even say it. It was this internal, just my spirit man, fully engaged, just putting a an absolute roadblock on this thing. This is not going to happen. This is not okay, not acceptable. Done deal. No questions. Okay. And I promptly forgot about it. That was less than a 15-second event. And I promptly forgot about it until later in the day. And then John got a call from Cheryl saying that something pretty, pretty serious had happened with John. You want to say anything about that? Um, so basically I did a really big jump and, um, I told myself before I wasn't going to go without anybody there. Well, there happened to be a really good biker there and he showed me the ropes and I've done this one multiple times, ended up walking through it. We did it and I succeeded all the way through except for one section. I said, all right, I'm going to try it again. I want to make it better. So I tried it again and I did this and I fell on my shoulder fell on my head. I think I did a series of other somersaults. <laughs> and then um, uh, it's, a, it's about six or seven feet high, but it's about 10 or 12 feet long. 
and then just a drop. Um, so anyway, I did this and um, landed wrong, you know, so it kind of made me uh, disoriented. I didn't know where I was. I woke up <laughs> real quick. I mean, it was a split second on video. And basically, I was just saying, where am I? And I knew I was in the woods somewhere, but I didn't know I was in the woods. Um, but as uh, the seconds progressed, I realized where I was and what was going on. Well, the guy, he came over. He, I said, I think I might have dislocated my shoulder or something. He comes over and looks at my shoulder. And he's like, well, maybe. <laughs> he's not really sure. Something's going on with it, but he wasn't really sure. And uh, he says, well, let's get your stuff. And let's take your stuff to the car. Well, he takes me up there and he says, you know, if you're okay, I'll take the rest of the family home and their bikes, and then I'll come back and pick you up, and I'll take you to wherever, you know, hospital or whatever to get something checked out. As we're walking to the car, and I didn't realize, I was thinking that we're, he was parked at the bottom of this hill. Turns out he's parked, like, at this entrance that not a lot of people park at, at the top of the hill, like, you know, 100 feet from where we are. He's parked right there. So we walk out towards his car, and he's packing up my bike and park, packing up one of uh, Cheryl's bikes, actually. And another friend drives by who lives in that neighborhood, but it's not like she comes by every day, you know, like same time I'm there. Uh, Amy, she's coming in from dropping her kids off at school. Oh, no, Children's Mercy. Yeah, that's right. She's with her kids over there. And um, she says, you know what? Let me drop off my kids and I'll take the rest of the kids home and then we can take everybody home right now. So it was like complete divine appointment back to back. Um, and when I got to the hospital, uh, Amy ended up taking me to the hospital, and doctors were kind of amazed that I was raising my arms and moving stuff around. And they said, "Does it hurt?" I said, "Well, yeah, it does, but I can move it, you know." And um, so they they did some X-rays and stuff. Turns out nothing was broken, nothing was going on um, that was super serious, and uh, they kind of classified it as a um, a very a lower class uh, AC separation. Well, uh, basically, yeah, the ligament was kind of separating. Um, and since then, uh, it's just, I, later on that night, Cheryl and I were laying in bed, and I was like, I don't know, I, I kind of felt this girding to know and believe that I'm grafted from the same grafter of healing himself. He is healing and I am from that same graft. I am part of healing too. I am made in healing. I am one with healing. I'm one with him. And I, you know, I, I don't think it's too small to ask that tomorrow. I said, maybe it's too small. I told Cheryl that I said, maybe it's too small that I asked I'm healed tonight, but by tomorrow, <laughs> I'm going to be better. And by the end of the day, the which was last night, I mean, dad came by and I was able to move my hand around. I didn't actually have my brace on and Honestly, the whole time that I've been here at the meeting, like the brace has been kind of, um, uh, and it just hasn't felt comfortable. And I'm not gonna go dancing and jumping around, but I feel amazing right now. Um, and the whole time that we've been here, it's significantly better. And this is two days ago that they said that I had the AC separation. So anyway, I'm, I am from that same graft. I am from that same. Uh, chip off the old block. <laughs> <laughs> That's super. So, uh, so uh, the key point for me was that uh, God, through His amazing abilities, gives us pre warnings from the spirit realm, as if and as we learn to live in the spirit realm. And he helps us to move in heavenly places. You see, since there was nothing happening when I was taking a shower, so there wasn't anything physically tied to that prayer. It wasn't until six or eight hours later that this happened. And so um, when Debbie showed me the video, it's rather disturbing if you see it. It's, uh, it's rather disturbing. <laughs> And but when I looked at it, I said, "No, this is not going to be that serious." You watch, just because why? Because in the spirit realm, we'd already engaged yeah. and done the business. Yeah. The business was done, so need no need to kind of get all in a yank about this. Like, oh no, this is terrible. He'd probably be laid up for 
months, you know, and whatever. And there you are, you know, all in a tizzy. Because why? If, if that was the case, is because you're living in the soul realm. Yeah. Fear is tyrannizing you. Mm -hmm. Terrorizing you. And so what we want to do is learn to live in the spirit realm so that when stuff happens, before it happens, we can do business. After it happens, no, no, this is not going to be a big deal. You watch. So what I'd like to do here maybe is, uh, so remember, this is our soul and this is our body. What I'd like to do is a little activation now of beginning to bring our soul man in sync with our spirit man. And eventually, I don't know, this is just kind of out there, but I think we have some biblical examples of this. Eventually, I think where we're headed is we'll bring our body with us also. Enoch seemed to be able to do that. Elijah did that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that eventually we'll be able to do this too. But I do know, I do know that this is possible because this is already happening. It's uh, a part of, I believe, the scripture says in the washing of regeneration. This soul man is getting regenerated. You see, this got saved. This didn't get saved. This is the process of being regenerated. So what we have to do is activate stewardship, responsibility over it, and bring it into sync with our spirit man. Now, um, that could probably be elaborated on some more, and I'm sure there's a lot of stuff I don't understand. But um, I'd like to just step into that a little bit and as an activation and uh, encourage us to explore, experiment, flex our muscle, stretch into the area where we're actually speaking from our spirit man and bringing our soul into alignment with, first of all, just in subjection to our spirit so that our soul's taking orders from our spirit rather than our spirit man having to go take a nap while our soul man takes the lead. You know what I'm saying? So if you don't mind, we'll step into that a little bit. Okay? Um, how are we doing? Do we need to take a break? I see roamings going on. <laughs> okay. Well, we have the gallery. The gallery is full of roamers, so... <laughs> uh, what do you say we take 10 minutes and we'll come back to this, okay?
non-dominating, non, you know, whatever, just kind of take your liberty, they're all free, you can stream them or download them, doesn't matter, it's all yours, whatever you like. No, but, no, but if you ask me, I'll send it to you. It will be a thing one of these days, we're working on it. It's a thing in my mind. It's a thing. <laughs> I love it when my grandkids say Okay. Ooh, that just kind of feels good. Yeah, feels yeah. good. So what I'd like to do is spend a little time of marinating and activating. And as much as we can, not get in our head. Just live in the heart realm. And I realize that identifying our spirit might be kind of a, you know, a little fuzzy territory right now, and I'm cool with that. But at least get in a heart realm. In a heart, I don't know if that's biblically distinguishable between our soul and spirit. I don't know, but just Bible says in 
Proverbs 4.23, guard over your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow all the issues of life. So maybe if you want to go to heart level, but or if you're adept and skilled at spirit man, then do that. Okay, so you just you choose. But what we're gonna do now is, and I'm gonna just start kind of my own process, my own prayer. And I'll hopefully give you enough space that you can activate it and make it your own words, put your own thoughts, your own passion, your own pathos behind it. So you have your own encounter. If at any time, Holy Spirit takes you on a left turn or a right turn and takes you down another route, follow him, okay? Do what he's doing. If you don't know, to just hang with me and we'll see where we go, okay? <laughs> we love your presence, Father. You're better than silver or gold. Better than better than all the knowledge of the world. We love you. You melt our hearts yeah. again and again and again and again. You make us fall in love with you. Lord, we love this heavenly realm, this heavenly world. We're getting more familiar with heavenly realities. They're captivating us, making us sold out. So good, so good. It's better than all the temporal stuff we've ever learned or known. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's our desire, Father, to follow Jesus' invitation to learn to live with him where he is. That means the heavenly realm. We want to get skillful, familiar, and living in the spirit realm and learning what your spirit sounds like and what our spirit sounds like. So now we just, from our spirit man, just the one who's been duly authorized and divine order to be set in charge of our three-part being, just from our spirit man now, speak to our soul. And first, we just speak softly, kindly to our soul. You've done awesome, our soul, for, the, for what we gave you to work with. You've done awesome. For our belief system that we had, you've done awesome. We want you to know, mind, will, and emotions, we want you to know. I'm grateful. But we're learning some new and improved, new and improved understandings. And that is, from now on, it's going to be important for you to 
follow my spirit now. It's going to be important for you to look to my spirit man as the leader. So I bless you to be a good responder, a good partner, to work in concert with my spirit man, to feed me the right intellectual qualities, the right emotional qualities that are in keeping with where my spirit man is and what the spirit of God says. My soul, you're going to do awesome with this. And let me give you a little teaser, my soul. Here's a little teaser for you. You're going to find healing in the process. Yes. As you come into right order, you're going to find healing. Memories, personality, character issues begin to be restored. I'm sorry, I let you be king when it wasn't right to be. And I let you run me in areas that we sustain some hits. And today, I want to make that right. I want to set things in motion so that we have a proper and a divine order in our being. So, so man, I bless you. My mind, I just bless you as you process. Your CPU kicks in at times when I need you. And I bless you to spit out the right answers that support where Father God is and where my spirit man is. I bless you to be a good responder. My soul man, I mean my emotions, I bless you to give me good and strong emotions when they're in keeping with the spirit of God and what's happening in my spirit man. Oh yeah, I, I bless those the well of emotions to be unhindered, unrestrained, fully activated, a strong part of my being. My mind, yes. My emotions, yes. When you're in sync with my spirit man. And when you're not in sync, it's blessed you're going to have the ability to put the brakes on and you're going to listen to me, my spirit man, you're going to listen to me. But I said, no, 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 not going down that road. It's not time, it's not right. Not going down that road. My soul, you're going to be really good at this. We're going to learn to work in partnership. We're going to be a dynamic trio, body, soul, and spirit. Yeah. Now, if you don't mind, you can look up here just a second, and just so you get the visual, and then I'm going to close my eyes again. My soul man has functioned, for all intents and purposes, has functioned kind of separate from my spirit. Not that it is real in reality. I'm just saying my soul wasn't very much aware of my spirit because I'm just, well, I'm just a man of intellect and emotions, right? But now what I want to do, because I'm speaking for my spirit, I want to reach down. See how this works for you. And again, if it doesn't feel good to you, no pressure, okay? No pressure. If it feels good to you, Feels right, meaning if there's the witness of the Spirit in your hearts, all right, but reach down and pull your soul up into sync with your spirit man. So here, I'm just going to kind of slow down now. 
I'm in my spirit man. Now, those of you who knew who Bob Jones was and were around him, if you ever remember seeing him, he'd stick his little pointy chin out and he'd kind of do a little kind of, and I don't know what that all was, but that was strangely, it kind of works for me. Not the chin part. <laughs> but it works for me to just kind of breathe in. In other words, kind of stop breathing and be intentional at breathing in. And when I do, my, I feel like my spirit man could go down and begin to pull my soul. Oh, oh, oh that, that gets me. Just reach down around your soul, man. Your mind, will, and emotion, you're bringing them up to where everything is whole and pure. Remember, our spirit man is in holy communion common fellowship with the Spirit of God. And we're bringing our soul right up to enjoy and appreciate that communion and that fellowship. Bring it right on up, on up. See it merging. Uh, now you can breathe again. <laughs> Maybe you need to do that again. Again, uh, I, I don't know where my soul is exactly. And I don't know where my spirit is exactly. Although Jesus did mention out of her belly shall flow rivers, right? So uh, whatever that point is, I just come, sometimes it helps me reach there. Sometimes I put my hand on my stomach. And I breathe in and pull up at the same time. Again, you're going to learn your way. Try my way. If it doesn't work, forget it. Do your way. Reach down there. No, pull it up. Yeah, my soul, man. Yeah, enjoy. Enjoy. Merge with my spirit, man. The spirit of God. Yeah. Now, my soul, man, I bless you to be a good imbiber. How do you like that? Ingester. One who eats at this table. One who drinks from this cup. One who enjoys this meal of communion. Common union. In fact, uh, this might be a good time to do so we're going to move on just a little bit and Debbie's just going to put a communion element in your hands so we're just speaking now our soul man to enjoy the communion the common union with the spirit of God you see we got plenty of biblical examples was it Isaiah, I believe it was, who was yanked up by his hair? Is he the one? Was it Isaiah or Ezekiel? I always get mixed up. Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Yanked up by his hair. He was already in the spirit. Yanked up by his hair. That's his body. And taken 800 miles to another location and God showed him some stuff. So Lord, we're just relishing, enjoying this heavenly environment. I realize we're opening our little presents now, so give ourselves a little bit of time. If you don't, if you haven't already 
We're taking, just hold on to just a minute. No problem if you have, no problem. Just. Thank you, Lord, for this communion. Jesus, you said, as often as we do it, do it in remembrance of you. Wow. And here we are with you, Spirit of God, our spirit man, and beginning to experience more unification, more unity with our soul and spirit than maybe ever before. This is a wonderful journey, wonderful trajectory. Where would this take us, Lord? If we found ourselves able to live in this reality. Wow. So we pull our soul, man, into unity with our spirit. I'm just going to pull this passage in. Jesus said, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood. You have no part of me. Well, that means if we eat his flesh and drink his blood, we do have part of him. And I quoted the first Corinthians passage earlier today. He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Wow. If you don't mind, just take when you take this wafer, this representative of his body, the bread, you take Lord. I'm joined with you and becoming one spirit with you. My whole being, my whole being. Eventually, Romans 8 says, even the redemption of the body, that's scripture. Even the redemption of the body. We're just at the soul right now. Lord, this is an amazing journey, amazing path. So Lord, here we go. Another installment. Receive now your body to be joined with you. To one spirit with you. Um, if this helps, put him on. I realize, you know, there are a lot of little human things that sometimes we do that become little tools. They're not necessarily doctrinal or anything like that. We don't build any edifices or monuments to them, but they're just little tools. Put him on, just say, oh, I'm in Jesus. Put him on. Your shirt, your top, whatever you got on there. Think of it. He's just on you. You put him on. Oh, does he feel good? Yeah. Yeah. Let's speak to our body now. My body, I just bless you. I want you to know that I love you and I honor you. I'm so grateful that you've been a good tent, a good house, a good vehicle to take me through life. For the most part, you've done it in good health, and I appreciate that so much. Thank you for being a good host, a good carrier of my soul. When my spirit man was raised, it was already elevated somewhere along the line, way early in my life, different places, other people's lives. <clears throat> But my body, I bless you. You've been good, and I want you to know I love you, honor you. But I also want you to know 
that today we're starting new rules, new ways, upgraded ways. I've let you be the determiner of my reality way too many times. And I want you to know that I'm giving my spirit man, for my spirit man I'm speaking now, I'm going to begin to take the lead. Take the lead. And I'm blessing you, my body, to be a good responder, a good follower, a good partner, a good implementer. Implementing what I feel the presence and spirit of God is doing and saying. I bless you to be eager, ready, on deck, ready to go. And I speak to my body to be renewed. Even again, the Romans 8 passage, even we ourselves groan for the redemption of the body. Wow. Lord, that's in there. That's in there. That, that's what your dream is. And you put that little bait, that little tantalizing incentivizer out there. Can you go after this? Can you believe for it? We love what you're doing, Lord. So we just speak to our body to be renewed. There would be fresh, new life source that doesn't just come from food, or air, or sunshine, or rest, a supernatural, supernatural. The Lord, we understand in 1 Corinthians, your word says, if we eat and drink unworthily, we can eat and drink damnation to ourselves. And that's why some are sick and some sleep. But the opposite of that is also true. That if we eat and drink worthily, that we eat and drink life to ourselves. So Lord, I just want to speak to my body that my cells, my systems, would not just be made healthy, but Lord, would be recreated in keeping with the original Adam before he fell and beyond. Even better. That where my body's cellular makeup would be restructured so that the cycle of death, the cells that have a death cycle built into them, would be reversed, canceled out, and they would have a cycle unto life. Life to life. We believe in glory to glory. Why not life unto life and to more life unto more life? We bless that process so that even our cells, bless you my cells right now, to come in keeping with, to drink deeply or receive deeply from the Spirit of God, from the heavenly realm. Yes. What it means to have a, the redemption of the body. We bless my cells. I bless you in Jesus' name to be renewed to original design. Everybody say original design. Original design. Yeah. And so Lord, here we are. The life is in the blood. And so we receive now the life that's in this blood. But just take a moment, stay in your spirit, man. Don't, don't check out. Feel that life go in. If you need to just kind of play on that, that, that little sensation that's going down your esophagus right now, just play on that. Just use that as your golden imagination prompter. That's the life of God going into you. Now transfer that over in the spirit room. Going into my body, my whole being, spirit, soul, body, 
Oh, it's coming into conformance with the pattern sign, Jesus. We love your ways, Lord. They're so good. They're better than our ways. And you're training us and giving us keys how to walk in ascended life. Oh, you're awesome, Lord. You're awesome. Okay. So, so man, thank you for participating with me and yielding. And I bless you as you yield over and over and over again until there will never be kind of this straining back and forth, but there'll just be this harmonious oneness. How good it is and how pleasant it is when my three-part being works in unity. Something like that. <laughs> so thank you, Lord. You're awesome. Amen? Okay. Anybody have an experience there you'd like to talk about during our time? Did you see something happen that was fresh or new or beyond what we'd experienced before? And you're like, okay. Well, not really new to me, just um, uh, another uh, experience. I immediately went into the garden before you, I mean, you had just yeah. got started. But I wasn't going into the garden by myself. The Holy Spirit was with me. Yeah. And we met Jesus. And then it was like, we didn't, it, it didn't feel like we were walking, but yet I could see the path. And in our Friday Zoom, um, Paul Bell talks about a waterfall. And, um, you know, I have, I have come to meet him at that waterfall, but I never really saw, you know, when, when you see a waterfall, the water's coming from some place, and usually it's off of a mountain. And I never really saw the mountain, and today I saw the mountain. Isn't that so I am? And Holy Spirit Jesus taking me to Papa. And he just grabbed a hold of me and held me. And as you continued to speak, it was like I became one with all three. Mm -hmm. And it was just so invigorating, so peaceful, so loving. And at one point, I was on my knees, and he picked me up mm -hmm. and held me again. And it was just, um, he said, I knew you before the foundation of the earth. You're my beloved son. And man can't live by bread alone, but by every word that he says. That carries life substance. I had an experience on the way here, actually, in the car. And I was taken into a hallway in God's home. And it had... He had his favorite memories of me, like, as, like pictures on his wall, and the house was covered in these picture frames. And he turned on the light, and there's more down here. He showed me around his home. It just made me feel even more one with him, just like a grandparent or whatever would have photos in their home on their wall. And this, they're so you know, they're so excited about what happened in this stage and what's what happened in this stage. And I was all well, driving on the way here. I was just remembering that. Yeah, I definitely were driving. Yeah, while I was driving, I had the moment. I actually didn't, I didn't share it with Cheryl, but I was like, oh, that's nice. Wow. <laughs> I think 
the next time we get together, I think it's going to be December uh, 11, is it? 9th. 9th, okay. Uh, when we get together, I think we're going to do a little artwork. <coughs> how many sketches, how many sceneries have we heard? Different ones we've shared. Yeah. We're going to do a little artwork. We're going to have pen and paper or pencil and paper. We're going to sketch out heavenly scenery that we have experienced either in the past or currently experiencing now. The reason I believe this is important is we're very familiar with this. Jeff, uh, where Jeff is, I bet you he knows every nook and cranny of it goes on this lane all the way out to the main road. He's very familiar with that. How familiar are you with our heavenly world, your heavenly reality? And so the sketching of it helps to not only force you to concentrate, like, well, what do I see? What did that look like? But then it gives you the ability to go back there. It's like, yep, that's right. I wrote that down. I can do that again. I think that'll be kind of fun. <laughs> Um, just FYI, it's next month, second Saturday, December 11th at our house. That's the 10, 10 to 2, right, Mark? Because it's the second yeah. Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so we'll have lunch that day. But we'll send another notice. It's the second Saturday, December 11th, our house. And there will be business cards sitting at the, t at the door. And when you go there, the very top thing is the next meeting that we have. Whatever that is, it's the next meeting. So, you go to ALC, yeah. this business card take you to a website, and then you'll find all that info there. Great. Um, right when we started with the with the music on, um, I could see in the spirit right above us in the room. Um, I don't know how to explain it. It's sort of like wispy. It wasn't smoky. It was, um, but it was wispy, full of col col colors almost like water but it wasn't and it was just slowly moving different colors and it and I, I was just watching it and i was expecting it to come down like it was a presence of the lord type of thing but it didn't and then i was like well maybe i just need to be inviting it down and it did not come down and i felt like the lord said you need to go up so i went up in it well in it i could do um a lot of things just kind of move around like like kind of literally play in it um, and it was during the time when you were talking about, you know, moving into your spirit and, and how, how we engage our spirit. And, and it was so I was just asking the Lord, what, you know, what is this about? What, why is this, why am I seeing this and what's going on? And I did feel like it was a bit of an invitation to, to just, as we're learning as a, as a community, that when we come together, when we start, that we just, you know, our, our first things we're doing as we're entering into the spirit is we even look around in the spirit in where we are here. What is the Lord doing here? Mm -hmm. What's happening right in our midst? He may bring us to other places, but it's also, I think it's important that we learn how to just see as well in our midst. And that helps me go into the spirit when I just close my eyes and I look in the spirit. Sometimes I don't see things. Sometimes I do. Um, but, you know, in the past when we've come together, people have seen similar things. And, you know, sense the Lord in the room or, or some different angels or waterfalls or some things like that, and colors. And, um, so uh, I, I guess I just say it as an encouragement uh, as we're learning, uh, you know, even, even even when the music's on, just, in, you know, that leaning in, closing your eyes and looking and allowing your golden imagination, the childlikeness to just see and experience what it's been. So I had an experience earlier in the week that I wanted to tie into your reorientation of our, our being. Um, earlier this week, I just for various reasons, some of you may have heard people talk about going to the library in heaven, and uh, it's a, a place. I don't know exactly. Might your scroll there, your books there. I don't know. I go and I look at my book. So I told the Lord, I want to go to the library today. And so I did what I normally do, and I just imagined the steps, and I was walking up the steps. And, but the door changed as I approached the door, and also Celeste was beside me, and that she's not usually with me. Um, 
in these experiences. And, and the door changed from a, gra a beautiful granite door to this curtain of, of stars. And I thought, well, that's kind of cool. You know, a new thing. I've been here a few times. This is new. And I, so I walked through it anticipating going into the library, and I didn't end up in the library. I ended up in space. So you walk through stars, you end up in space. <laughs> um, and um, so this is two experiences. I'm going to tell them both, and then I'm going to tie to this. Um, so there I was, floating with Celeste. <laughs> And an angel that I encountered quite a bit, I can call him, you know, my tutor, uh, his name is Johansson. He was sitting there at a desk in space. <laughs> so, and it was kind of kidney shaped, uh, and the desk top was liquid. Yeah, well, this is weird, you know. And so we kind of sat like we were going to have some meeting, and he floated these, these wireframe little boats across the desk toward me and toward Celeste. And he said, uh, you're going to lose your point of reference, and you're going to need these. And they were magnets. They were little ship-shaped magnets, kind of wiring. And after he said that, he took them and he put them in our heads. So I, I thought, oh, okay, orientation, magnets, compass, that makes sense. Uh, you're in space. You, you lose your point of reference. There's no up, down, left, right. They're just, you know, forward, whatever. So I said, okay, wait a minute, i got to write this down, I'm going to forget it. So I stopped and journaled all this, and I said, great, I still want to go to the library. Because <laughs> I didn't get in. And um, so I went back, went up the steps, went, the door was normal, I went through the door, I went up the, the light escalator is what I call it, to the third floor where my book is. And there was an angel who hands you your book, and he's an attendant. And this time, I'd never done this before, I asked him his name. I said, what's your name? And this happens to me every time I ask an angel's name. It's about six miles long, and there's no way I can remember it or even pronounce it. And then they'll say, but you can call me. Oh. So, so, but you can, he, so he said this long name. He said, but you can call me the keeper. I said, oh, great, I can remember that. <laughs> so he, I said, OK, you know, can I have my book? I want to take a look at some things. And he said, uh, yes, but you need to keep it kind of narrow and not, you know, wander off. I said, that's fine. And as he handed me the book, he said, these relationships that you're developing are fundamental to what's about to happen. And you need to establish them. And I knew right away, because over the last couple of weeks, I've had more meetings, more dinners, more connections with more people than I have probably in the last three or four years. And I knew it was specifically regarding this group. So I was like, oh, okay. But when he said relationships, my whatever brain, whether it was just free association, the Holy Spirit, or whatever, said relationships. Oh, okay. Orientation, losing my points of reference, ships, relationships with people. And so, okay. Uh, and so that sent me spiraling for a minute. And said, okay. So I've been pondering this all week, and um, I want you to think about this. Now, what happens if you want to magnetize a piece of metal? You can stroke it in the same direction this time, and it will be magnetized or get you pulled. So having a, a compass in our minds oriented properly is exactly what you were talking about. We're keeping that spirit man, that, that uh, soul man in the body, oriented properly because when our points of reference are taken away from us, we need to not be guided by our emotions. We need to not be guided by our, our appetites. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you teasing me about dessert. Uh, we need to be oriented by that kinos man that is going the right direction in the first place because it's already a point. So, But now what happens when you put magnets together? They gather together. They orient themselves, positive and negative, but they still have, as a group, an orientation that is north-south, right? So when we gather together, these relationships that are already now properly oriented, because you just taught us about how to properly orient them, even though our points of reference are being taken away, we can, as a group, remain oriented, oriented, and as we, as the body, encourage one another, build each other up in love, and uh, all those good things that we know about what the body does. 
I, I think we begin to establish um, you know, a body that uh, is not thrown by what's going on and has a vector in the right direction. So, that's wow. incredible. Yeah. And what was it? Relationships. Ships. Yeah. They're magnet things. Yes. Oh, and the, the thing that helped me with that is how birds migrate. There is something in their bodies that knows the orientation. And so the Lord has put us that kind of span in our body. Uh, it, it knows the orientation. Oh, that's good. In our spirit, sorry, I didn't correct the Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah. Wow. 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 Yeah. Mm. How should we respond to that? Anything? Well. Anybody got an idea? How should we respond to that? Should we activate in that? Anybody know of anything? Great, perfect. So I saw these. So I saw these uh, good-sized flat stones that have been in a river for many, many years, and they were smooth. With so when you laid them down on the ground, uh, they just really fit together well. And on the whole, they, they were a path. And so what I believe what the Spirit of the Lord is saying is I've, I've worked in your lives individually through all these years <clears throat> to take out those edges and those places that harm you and harm others. I've perfected you into a, small, a smooth, stone for others to walk on. So what I saw, so that's an individual prophecy, but the group prophecy is I saw a path going off into the distance of all of those smooth stones brought together for the next generation to come and to walk on those smooth stones. Yeah. And this group is that path. Hmm. Mm -hmm. He's brought you through your lives, through all the testing and all the fire and all the chiseling, all the disappointments, all the failures, delivering you from your sin patterns, healing your wounds. Made you smooth. Mm -hmm. And he's brought you together with a beautiful group of people that he's going to use. Fitly joined together for the next generation. Mm -hmm. Boom. Boom. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you know, so many I had. Part of our gifting is to find people and connect them to different things. Definitely, yeah. just seem to do that, and we really enjoy it because it's always around a meal and it's around fellowshipping and that kind of thing. But you know, uh, in building relationships, we have to go beyond just this meeting. There has to be more continuity with all of us. I know we see it on the Zoom, but spending time with one another is so valuable and. Uh, going that extra effort to have dinner and to connect outside of even the group and building those relationships is so important in this in this time. And uh, you know, I was I was thinking about he told us to watch Neville Johnson, and I, I would, one of the things that captured my mind there was my heart was the fact that he and so I may have missed it, but he said, "I live with." in the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. He says, I see the angels all over. He says, in fact, I have to turn it off mm -hmm. because it's just overwhelming. And I think that we've, we've got these uh, pioneers that, have, that God has given us to be able to look at. A couple of years ago, we would have thought they were new age gurus, but realized today that they are or the forerunners that have gone before us to, to give us something not just about 
see an occasional Holy Spirit, but actually live in there. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, we've been taken from this here to this to this. And God keeps expanding that to where I just, it's just an endless, you know, the kingdom is endless. And John, wasn't it last night you were listening to Neville Johnson? Yeah. Through the night? Uh, two nights ago, and he was having encounters all through the night. Every time I wake up, he was. I kept waking up with him in my dreams. Mm -hmm. Talking in my dreams, I woke up with my leg. Heaven again. Yeah, that's great. For those that want to know, Mark sent out that video to all of us, right? And I think we're going to watch the short one here in a minute. Okay. It was very good. And you think, Mark, I really think our appropriate response is to eat intentionally. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tongue in cheek, but um, when we sit down together, not just eat. I mean, when we sit down, we're going to eat here, I hope. Everybody's <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, to, but to do that with intentionality is my point. Is that <laughs> that, um, that's right. that the, the groundwork that's being laid, like the stones that he just talked about, the groundwork that's being laid. These stones are a foundation, you know, to a pioneering new work that we don't even fully understand ourselves, but we know that we're breaking ground, and that foundation is fundamental. You know, and just it is. All yeah. things are. And so, you know, every every meal, every conversation, every opportunity, every every testimony uh, is laying a foundation with these stones to lay the path. Mm -hmm. Dessert. I'm going to eat with intentionality. That's right. <laughs> Steve, eat food. Oh, I think that was a prophetic word. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was just going to say um, this morning before we got up, I had a vision of a white ship, an older white ship, but it looked modern at the same time, and it had mass, the sails, and it was. It was white and it was in the background. It was set against white cliffs and it was on a blue, just a blue ocean. Wow. And I had, Mary Kay asked me, what do you think it means? I'm like, I don't know. I mean, but the scripture that came to me was in Psalm where it says, those who go down to the sea in ships who do business on great waters have seen <laughs> the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, the word about ships mm -hmm. and maybe that ship that I saw is this container. Does that have sense? Sure. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, the revelation part of blue. That's right. Yeah. You know, and the, there's and the the sails catching the winds mm -hmm. of the spirit. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Can we all get one of those ships? <laughs> 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 and, and I, we just want to announce that Sunday night at the well. We're going to have Thanksgiving dinner. Several have already committed in here tonight to come. Uh, we're going to meet at 4 o'clock. Uh, we'll have fellowship, a uh, great meal, and just come and enjoy yourselves with us for that worship. And, and that's it's, where? At the well that's in Clinton. If you need directions, just see Mike Town back there, our awesome violinist, going to worship. And so, anyway, we're. So it's, you're gonna, a, it's a fun place. You're going to eat with intentionality. We are going to eat with intentionality, and we're going to continue to build this net. That's right. Because we're, build, we're net builders, every one of us. Somebody else get that tomorrow? Yes. Uh, no, tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow evening. Four o'clock. Four o'clock. But you need a cow probably for food? We'll have one. Well, we'll have one. Super. Yeah. Yeah. I was looking on my phone to find it, but I can't find it. But I think it was a year and a half ago in Nashville, um, Justin Paul mm -hmm. was prophesying over you. And, and there was a, several significant things that he saw. But one of the ones that stood out to me was, and this, this you will need to do together. And um, there was a pretty strong emphasis on going together mm -hmm. after the Lord in, in his ways. And so... Um, 
you know, I think what what Paul saw just gives us even a more more like finite and what, what Steve just shared, like <clears throat> yes together, but it's also because that's what's going to help us stay true to to where we're going and, and right, yeah. through that the Lord is going to lead us together. Right. Yeah. Um, and we need each other to, to walk together. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And you know, so I you know I kind of when when Paul said, you know, I think our activation is eat together with intentionality. And I think that <laughs> I, I agreed with that. I'm like I, I just feel like, you know, when I heard Justin say that and, and now he was he was not the first time we had heard that. Yeah. Right. And we knew that the Lord had been saying it's not the first time. Um, it's it's just something internally in, in our own hearts that I think we just need to agree with. And and so some of the practices are, yes, let's eat together today with intention to healthy. If you don't have anywhere to eat tomorrow night, go to the well. <laughs> eat with intentionality. Um, invite others over and that's starting to happen, you know, more and more. And um, I think just in our own hearts to commit to saying, yeah, I, I want to go this way, Father, and I know we need each other so it's, and one more step that out. That what we're mm -hmm. saying is realize, realize that the Lord is the one that has brought you together. That's right. Capiche? Capiche. Yeah. He's yeah. making a pathway for yeah. the next generation. Yeah. Yeah. And he's brought the living stones to, That's the, to make a pathway. Yeah. Isaiah 35. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Italian, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? I was looking at my phone trying to find this, um, and I couldn't <laughs> find it. But I'll try and sing it for you, which is, it's very short. This song just came out of me, I think, in the car one day, and I was reminded when Paul was talking about orientation. And it's, it's just very simple. Be my orientation, be my salvation, be my walking stick, be my orientation, be my salvation, be my walking stick. That's all I have. Yeah. I, I think what I really realize is that he will orient us to even look at the right moment and see what we need to see, be on the path we need to be on, call at the right time, right. knock on the door when we need to, that type of orientation. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Super. <laughs> be my orientation. Yeah. Be my salvation. Be my walking sin. Oh, oh, that is together. <laughs> <laughs> Just to confirm everything, it's First Peter two is exactly you yourselves are being are living stones are being built up together as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. As a living house, right? Oh, yes. yes. living. Mm -hmm. And then you have to eat. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't eat, you'll die. <laughs> <laughs> Not true. We have food to eat. Leave it. Leave it. That's why we bring Steve. <laughs> so we don't forget to eat. <laughs> oh, super. Okay. So I'm going to set something up, and I'm going to have uh, Jeff pull up a video behind that. Some of us. Let me get this. I think it's better now. There we go. Okay. So.
we're on the earth. We have been landlubbers. We have been. There's, and then somewhere up here is the heavenlies, whatever. And this is what we have been referring to as above the line. And so that line is the magical, the line of definition between earth and heaven. And of course, obviously, this is not an altitude thing. This is a engaging with the other realm that is working simultaneous with us in this very room. So heaven is not that far away, right? We are in heaven. So we're learning how to ascend above the line. Now, most people are still land lovers. And they are uh, locked to the earth. And whether they are pre-saved, pre-Christians, or even Christians. I mean, most Christians, uh, honestly and sadly, but just the way it is, are earthbound because they don't have anybody to tell them about a heavenly realm. And so uh, and that's not a diss, that's not an indictment, it's just the way, sadly, the way thing it is, things are. But here's the good news. What we're experiencing is not only for our own enjoyment. It is enjoyable. I love it. I want a lot more of what we've had, you know, and just build on that, build on that, and I'm going to just love every goosebump and every tear and every vision and every angel and every saint, and I'm going to enjoy it all. I love it. Okay, it's good. But what God, I believe, is doing is he's creating some called out ruling ones, which, what is the Greek word for that? Ecclesia. Ecclesia. This is what Jesus said to Peter, upon this rock of revelation, will I build my ecclesia, the called out ruling ones. So thank God that he loves us as sons. He's a good daddy. He takes care of us and he, he gives us a goosebump, Patricia, once in a while. And, and daughters. And what? Sons. And sons and daughters. And, daughters. <laughs> and he gives us just wonderful meltdowns. It's just the best ever. I mean, nothing else matters when that happens, right? So thank God for that. But he's building in us and building with us, as Doug just read in Second Peter, was it? First Peter, he's building us living stones together unto what? What is the language there? A spiritual house. Okay, so... Here we are finding ourselves once, you know, one over here and one over here, and pretty soon we find ourselves, oh, we got a group of us <laughs> meeting together. And we're finding ourselves in heaven and we're splashing and playing, romping and playing, <laughs> leaping and skipping, sorry, <laughs> leaping and skipping on the mountains. And we're finding this reality that is really wonderful and it's changing us. Not only is it changing, it's healing us. Yeah, it is. That's right. Stop. Yeah. This baggage, yes. it's getting healed up. Yes. Yeah. And we didn't even have to do sozo. Yeah. No. <laughs> and I love all that stuff. It's all good, you know? Yeah. But what happens if he does it? Yeah. And by the way, that's what sozo does anyway. So let's go there, or a manual prayer, or healing prayer. You know, let's go there, and then what does Jesus say about it? So he's a pretty good healer guy, you know? <laughs> so we're, what he's doing is taking us here because most people will still be down here. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. He's wanting us to learn how to move together with his spirit and then begin to rule. And when I say rule, I don't mean dominate. It's not that kind of rule. Yeah. It's bring righteous rule into the earth. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, excuse me? As a spiritual house that we already occupy. Excellent. As a spiritual house, and he's, as he occupies yeah. us, we're able to set up house in keeping with the heavenly design. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we speak down into it and just, just look what's happening. All we got to do is look around the church, the church of Jesus Christ. And how many do you think, how many people are bored in church? <laughs> One or two or a few? Okay. And so who do you think might have something to offer in this very near future? Those of us 
who have been in the heavenly places and said, hey, yes. there's life over on those other side of those hills. It's like the gold, gold rush in California or Oregon Trail. You know, it's like, there's gold over there, guys. I've been there. I saw it. And hey, let me show you a little bit. And I think God is building up this house of living stone. He says, I want, oh, my desire, God's Father, Father God's heart is like, I love these people. I'm not willing that any should perish. Yeah. I want them to understand how good I am. And I've been trying to tell them through my word, but it would be a lot better, a lot more real, a lot more personalized if you take me to them. In other words, if we take him to them, yeah. right? Yeah. Let me take you on a little journey, he's saying. I'm sorry, we say to uh, people, since we've been here, we're saying, let me take you on a journey. And then all of a sudden, they're captivated. It's like, oh, there's more than just an earthly existence. This is so awesome. I don't have to die. I don't have, my ticker doesn't have to stop before I can go to heaven. Yep. That's right. So it's just, I'm telling you, there's a whole, much, whole, much, whole lot more that we could unpack about that. But this thing is unto something. Yes. This isn't, and as wonderful it is that we're enjoying it. I don't want to diminish that at all. This is a big deal. God loves us being joyful. Uh, uh, your presence, Lord, fullness of joy, right? The kingdom of heaven is righteousness, peace, and in the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost. So anyway, uh, he loves joy and he loves us having joy. But this is unto something. If he could find a collected house, collective house, as, as Bab just read, built up of living stones, being able to manifest heaven to the earth. This, my friends, is Isaiah 60. To, in my world, Isaiah 60 says it more concisely and let me quote the top verses in Isaiah 60 that say it for me. The first one is, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And we say, yes, 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 but it's so dark out there. And he says, yeah, I know. And darkness covers the earth, and gross darkness covers the people. But that has nothing to do with you. You arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Verse 3. Verse 3, and then the kings yes. and the nations will come to the brightness of your rising. As, he, as they see us rising and, as we're going to see in this video, transfiguration begins to be manifest among us. A couple more verses in Isaiah 60, it says, and then your heart will swell with joy. Yes. As I glorify the house of my glory. And who's the house of God's glory right now? Yeah. You and me. Yeah. Yeah. It's powerful. Yeah. That's we right. am. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's watch this guy. He's an old timer. I think he's uh, 75 or more. And, uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Before you go forward. The point is, he's a seasoned veteran and he's still fresh and youthful and moving into new territory. What's his name? Neville Johnson. Oh. He's repeating James and John in my mountain. Was is that okay? Spin, no, no, no. Here, here. He was showing them what the is kingdom here? of love. I can't get that. I can't get ever get that to work. <laughs> Where is it? I'll do it right here. Look on the earth. Is that better? Heaven yeah. below. Where is the speaker? Right here. Saints were on the earth. She can do it. Oh, now we're talking. You know, if you die tonight, that's not prophetic. Say, 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 man, here. Say, you die tonight, 
I just had kind of poop. His spirit comes out of his body, right? And so he can still see you because his spirit came out of his body. But he can see the entire spiritual well. Right? You can see the angels here, see demons, see everything in the spirit realm. You take his spirit and pop them back in, can't see. True? So what's the problem? That's the problem. You see, I've learned to shut out this realm and look into the other realm. And it's easy. I can look around here, see where angels are. Over here. Yeah. Many angels. And turn back that off and look at you. Now that is how you have to become and how you have to walk. Sometimes I just have to shut it off for a day or two because it's too much. But it's a switch. When your mind is renewed, or to at least to a degree, you can see in both realms. The transfiguration, that whole realm comes over. This, uh, Two realms become one. But it takes a level of consecration. If we're going to enter the Feast of Tabernacles, it's now going to require a whole new level of consecration and surrender. Our mind to the Lord, consecrate. It requires some discipline of what we're going to feed up here. Before those powers of the age can come, we have to be conditioned, physically conditioned to receive it. It's all right when an angel has taken us somewhere because he can just touch us, and that's the conditioning enough to take us somewhere. I'm talking about normal life here, walking in the realm of God, walking in the realm of the Spirit. You know, Venus has been in a special situation over the last few months. It's gone now with those live special alignment. You know, Venus is the morning star, right? No? We're not astrologers. The stars belong to God and they have a voice. Astrology is a different thing. So, what's God saying? What is God trying to get across to us? You know? Five years ago, on the 30th of July, 2010, I had an interactive vision in which I found myself on a boat at sea. And I was on this boat, and it was as real as this. I was on this boat, and I thought, oh, where am I? And I was at the back of the boat, and I looked at the front of the boat, and Jesus was standing at the front of the boat. And I thought, oh, that's okay. The Lord's here, everything's funny. Then I saw the Lord, I was watching this, he, the Lord opened a very ornate chest. It was at the other end. The boat was about from here to that screen long, it wasn't a big boat. And he just opened it, and I saw him take an instrument out of the chest. And it was a sextant. How many of you know what a sextant is? How many of you young people don't know? We live in the satellite age. <laughs> but before satellites and before compasses, there was a, a, a device which you could plot your position at sea by taking a, a reading off the horizon and off any a particular star, you could tell exactly where you were. So he had this old fashioned instrument and he, he, he was on the boat. You know, it's very hard to lock on the horizon when the boat's going up and down. And I was standing there, I could watch this going up and down, and he went click. I thought, okay, he's just locked in the horizon. And he was standing there again, and he went up to a star and went click. And I knew that star was Venus. Don't tell me how I knew, but I just knew it was Venus. And I said, 
Okay, we took a bearing from the horizon and then for a star. And I noticed um, there were 16, uh, 14 segments on the sextant. I looked at the Lord and, and he looked at me. He said, this time spoken in the word regarding the morning star is beginning now. And I thought, okay. Um, he said, the morning star will arise over the next 14 years. Um, and become brighter and brighter. He said, I will arise in my people like never before, and at evening time it shall be light. And I know that was a scripture, but I couldn't figure out where it was until I came out of this. And um, Zechariah 14, 7, but it shall be one day which the Lord shall not be known to the Lord, not day, not night, but it shall come to pass that evening time it shall be light. In the darkness is going to be light. So I thought, well, that's all very nice, but what does it mean? Um, he said to me, transfiguration would start in many of my people, and they would become truly lights of the world. Yes. Uh, yeah. Lord, okay. Lord, me, Lord. You know, there are a number of references to the morning star in the scriptures. Peter. You know, years after the transfiguration experience, Peter said this in Second Peter one nineteen. He says, "We have a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that you take heed unto the light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn, that the star arises in your heart." You think, oh, "What's he talking about?" He said, this was not something, he said, we heard this when we were on the mount with Jesus. I said, uh-oh, he's talking about the transfiguration. But he said, we have a sure word of prophecy because we were there on the mount, he said, when that happened. The mount of transfiguration. Yeah. Now, he said, that was a sure word of prophecy. And as we come to the end of this age, that star is going to arise in God's people. They'll be transfigured, just as Jesus was transfigured. Yeah. And I thought, wow, you know, that is something, that is, that is very interesting because, you know, the morning star. Malachi said, just before Jesus returns, he said, the day star shall arise in your heart. Son of righteousness shall arise again with healing in his wings. There's something in our spirit that is waiting to be transformed. The spirit knows about it. And he said, the day star, there's something going to happen on the inside. It will happen first in our spirit. And from the inside, we'll be transformed to the outside. The day star will arise within us. The day star. Malachi talked about that. It shall arise within us. It's like there's an explosion in our spirit. There is life, such life imparted to our spirit that not only changes, it changes our spirit, but it also changes us physically. See, yeah. the light came from Jesus from the inside out and shone through his clothes. This is the next phase for us. The day star is going to arise within the hearts. Malachi talked about it. And the sun of righteousness shall arise within us first with what? Healing. That's physical. Healing. That's the fullness of Passover. Not one feeble person. Healing within us. 
saying we are prepared for the powers of the ages. Yeah. Yeah. There's a word of caution which says, the Bible says, you know, those who have tasted of the powers of the world to come, if they fall away from the faith, will not be forgiven. That's the downside. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he said. Tasted of the powers of the world to come and turn against the Lord, they shall not ever be forgiven. So there's a massive responsibility comes upon them. You know, there's no falling away. At that day star, we had the seed right within us. Jesus, you know, it's there. We have his DNA sitting there. This needs a slight spark at all. Transformation. Yeah. We go from a caterpillar <laughs> to a butterfly um, or an eagle. Sun of righteousness shall rise within us, healing in his wings. Are you getting this? Yeah. yeah. You know, I don't have a point one, point two, point three. I'm just talking to you as it comes. If you see it, Listen. it's not enough to believe it. You must believe it's for you. Yeah. The difference, you know. You say, oh, I believe that. Yeah. But do you believe that's possible for you? Yeah. Do you believe that is God's will for you? Yeah. You say, but I'm nobody. That's good ground. Yeah. The Son of Righteousness is going to arise within us. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, let me just close with this. You know, we're going to need ooh, five to ten. We're going to need great wisdom. I'm talking to pastors, first of all, leaders. You are going to need great wisdom to build the house of the Lord. Yeah. Because we are on ground we have not been on before. Um, yes. We have not gone this past this way before. We can't look back to the past. We need great wisdom to know how we get a massive move of God. How do we keep it without losing it? How do we form it? How do we control that? I didn't mean that in a good way, not the bad way. How do we build this in wisdom? Building the house of the Lord in wisdom and understanding. Yeah. And I've been praying for months about this. Lord, we, this is new territory. Yeah. <laughs> the way we built churches in the past is slowly disappearing. Mm -hmm. It's going to be different. That the structures, the way, lots of things, it's going to be different. Lord, how do we build the house of the Lord? We need wisdom. And in your sphere of influence, whatever it is, you need wisdom now. It's a different realm we're going into. You need wisdom and understanding to be successful in your realm of influence. You might be a school teacher or whatever. You need That's it. Wow. Isn't that awesome? Oh. oh, my spirit man just was like given permission, like, yeah, soar, it. soar. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> amazing. I, uh, several key phrases. Uh, this is the next phase for the body of Christ. So you said, well, what does that mean? So uh, anybody ever remember the outpouring of the baptism of the Holy Spirit in Azusa Street? Okay. Anybody remember uh, healing through John Wimber in the 70s, right? Yes. Anybody remember prophetic in the 80s? Yes. Anybody remember the apostolic in the 90s? Yes. Yeah. And so uh, I don't think this is a 
phase that it's a trend to come and go. This is like all of those. It keeps building on yes. what God is doing successively through history. Each one of those are still very deeply embedded into the fabric of our Christian life. Every one of those I just mentioned. And I believe this one will be too. If Jesus is our pattern son, he is, right? Do we believe that? Whatever yeah. Jesus did, we do, right? That's right. He's the pattern. Did he get uh, transfigured? Yep. Did he? Yep. yep. Does Romans 12, 2 say, Do not be conformed to the patterns of this age, but be ye transfigured by getting a new mind. Yeah. It's all there. It's just it's coming of age and the light is being shown on it. Good stuff. Any comments? And we're about ready to wrap it up here. Any comments? How are you doing? Craig. Yeah. You know, that's like the third or fourth time I listened to it, and then I finally checked out Second Peter. Yeah. Because um, I was like, how, how, did he, how did he link the Mount of Transfiguration with that passage from Peter? But I, I finally just read it, and it's, it's actually very linked. <laughs> so he's saying that, you know, in, in Second Peter 1, when we've been given the prophetic word, the written message of the prophets made more reliable, um, um, validated by the confirming voice of God on the Mount of Transfiguration. So Peter is talking about the Mount of Transfiguration. Right. And it's there right after that he says, and you will continue to do well if you stay focused on it for this prophetic message. I'm reading in the Passion Translation. For this prophetic message is like a piercing light shining in a gloomy place until the dawning of the new day when the morning star rises in your heart. Come on. And that whole word of the Lord telling him, this is the morning star. This is happening. This is rising. It just lands in a whole new place for me because it's such flowery language. I really didn't know what this meant. Yeah. You know, but that rising being linked to transfiguration and wow. all is just significant. Yeah. yeah. Super, Craig. Thanks for putting that yeah. together. Malachi cool to this. About rising and healing and yes, healing. right. The next part, this is just so fun. Okay. The next part of the verse in Malachi 4 2, I can't pull it up, but um, so the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing and healing. And you skip forth like a calf from the stall. <laughs> skip? Yeah, well, I don't know. Leap and skip. Wrong. There's two verbs romp and play. No, romp and know. play. <laughs> See, I told you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> romp and play. Uh, I've just reconfigured a jingle on the behalf of Jesus that I'd like to sing to the water. Oh, hold on, <laughs> hold on. we got to get this one. It's just a jingle. You'll, you'll get it. <laughs> but this is from Jesus okay. to you. Anything I can do, you can do greater. Oh. You can do anything greater than me. Oh. Sing it again, sing it again, sing it again. That's super good. Come on, Angela, you gotta do it again. Oh, that's super. Yes. Okay, Jesus, come on. Anything I can do, you can do greater. You can do anything greater than me. Oh, yes. Oh, that is so good. You just never know. You just never know around here. <laughs> okay, I have a response back. <laughs> Sorry for those in the 70s that grew up Peter, Peter Frampton. I'm in you, you're in me. I'm in you, you're in me. And uh, no, I forgot the rest of the part. It goes uh, <laughs> something about the love, love. Uh, and now you have gave me your love, love that I've never had. Come in you, you're in me. Because you gave me your love, love that I never had. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> he was singing with an Israeli tone. 
is really dumb. There we go. A little yeah, minor on. key and, yeah, yeah. and a little yeah. quarter tone stuff there. <laughs> well, church is taking on a different flavor these days. <laughs> I just felt like I'm supposed to make a declaration. The Bible says, if any man speak, let him speak as an oracle yeah. of God. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm supposed to say, I give you permission to transfigure. I give you permission to transfigure. Once again, I give you permission to transfigure. Lord, we. What's that? <laughs> Lord, thank you for this amazing journey we're on. This is, this is so fun. We get to romp and play and leap and skip and find brand new things. Got shiny new objects that are just fun, fun, fun. And then we realize you got a big grand plan overarching everything yeah. that is so cool yeah. we're so happy to be your kids yeah. and come into your kingdom more dynamically than we ever ever thought possible yeah. amen amen so, good stuff guys good stuff. hey what are we going to do paul right now <laughs> so I think Jeff has the burgers on the grill now so it'll be a few minutes before we start so as soon as he brings them in everything is ready to start we'll do that.